looks like Goose is fitting into his new herd pretty well. I think he still is a little bit off by himself, so I'm going to keep a pretty close eye on him. A few horses are due for a trim, so today I will be tackling that task after my regular chores. I was really surprised to see Pete waiting by the gate this morning. He has never done that for as long as I've owned him. I have noticed he's been a little bit more brave and outgoing since Goose and Gus have left their pasture. Whiplash, Little Gus, and Stewie are all very outgoing horses and I'm thinking that it's probably starting to rub off on Pete. I'm not quite done with chores, but I'm going to take this opportunity to swoop in and gather up Pete. Pete! Hi Pete! Hopefully Pete won't run away as soon as he sees me coming with the halter. It looks like Stewie is standing guard over his little herd on his turd mound. Pete is generally pretty hard to catch, especially if I don't have any of the other horses caught up first. Surprisingly, he tried to evade me for just a tiny bit and then he eventually let me catch him pretty quickly. This is very out of character for Pete, so I'll be interested to see what he's going to be like to handle today. Pete is broke to ride, but he does take a little bit of handling to get used to every season. Pete will never be for sale, so he is one that kind of gets stuck on the back burner, especially when I don't have a lot of time to devote to him every single day. He is perfectly happy living out with his little herd of horses, and so I don't worry too much about progressing his training typically. Bye, Pete! I didn't do a very good job when I parked my trailer yesterday, so I'm a little bit close to this old farm truck. It's not a big deal for Pete. He has been handled a lot, even though I don't ride him very often. After a liberal application of fly spray and a little treat for Pete, I am ready to start trimming him. Pete is one that does take quite a while to calm down and feel relaxed before I can get to trimming him. I think a lot of it has to do with how he was treated prior to me getting him. Even though I have had Pete for quite a long time, he is still always on high alert that something bad might happen to him. Every time I handle Pete, I make sure that I have more than enough time so he can settle down and kind of ease into whatever we're doing. For him, it's very important that I don't have to rush through things because he can get very scared pretty quickly if I do that. Even simply picking up his hoof to trim it gets him a little bit worried. For these really scared horses, I think it's important to just put their foot down and let them relax and then try again. Once Pete has finally relaxed, he actually stands very well to have his feet trimmed. But it does take probably about 10 minutes of me just letting him relax and picking up and putting down his foot until he really is able to stand quietly. His feet aren't too terribly long, he kind of gets a little bit splatty if I leave him go too long, so today we're just taking off a little bit of the length. Once Pete is finally in the right frame of mind, I can do a whole nipper run without him putting down his foot. Just a few extra minutes before we get going really helps Pete relax and makes it an enjoyable process for both of us. Most of the time people will just hold on to this foot until he would stop wiggling around, but I cannot do that with Pete. If he gets worried and has to put his foot down, I just let him set it down for a second and I move his feet forward a little bit. He is the kind of horse that when you put his foot down he is worried that he might get reprimanded, so I make it a point not to do anything too swiftly around him because he does get scared pretty easily. After a few more little adjustment to his heels and making sure everything's nice and smooth around the edges, Pete's first foot of the day is just about finished. I am going to top dress his foot so he doesn't get any cracks or his hoofs don't start splitting. This part can be a little bit tricky for Pete and his feet are a little bit stuck to the ground this morning. 
Eventually he lets me put it on the stand and I can get to work making his foot look perfect. Pete is one that I never hard tie. He has a little tie blocker ring that is tied to the trailer. I don't really ever hard tie any horses to the trailer when it's not hooked up to the truck, but Pete especially doesn't get hard tied to anything. He still has a tendency to pull back pretty aggressively if he gets scared. Even here you can see that he kind of likes standing a little bit farther away from whatever he's tied to. Pete does have a little bit of sole that needs to be exfoliated so I'm going to take care of that for him on this foot. Typically this time of year a lot of the horses are shedding their sole and their frog. I like for them to do that naturally but sometimes Pete needs a little bit of extra help because his feet are really hard. I forgot to get a video of what his foot liked before I trimmed it, but I will show you guys what it looks like now after I'm all done. All right, buddy. He is at seven weeks, so probably a little bit longer than he should have gone. I've never had to put shoes on Pete. When I first got him, his feet were a little bit worse than they are now, but overall Pete has really nice feet. If I were to take Pete out on the trail with a lot of rocky terrain, he probably would need some shoes because he does have kind of flat feet. Here is a look at his other front hoof before I trim it up. Because this one was a little bit long, he did have part of the hoof wall kind of break down, but that's about where I'm going to trim his hoof to, so it's not a big deal. Once my horses get on the regular feeding program, I typically do not have any trouble with their feet. I am taking my sweet time with Pete today. Mostly because he is still a little bit scared about me handling his feet, but also because my back has not been feeling great, so I don't want to hurt it more. Pete looks like he's having a little bit of trouble standing still. The flies are horrible right now. We've been getting a lot of rain on and off, and I think that's contributed to the bug problem here. I use a concentrated fly spray and mix up a couple of gallons at a time and I think I maybe mix this one a little bit too diluted because it doesn't seem to be working very well today. You guys are always hassling me how I have nothing on my wish list so I put some more fly spray up there if you guys are interested in getting some of that for the horses. This time of year the weather is really weird. It gets pretty hot during the day and then overnight it gets around 50 degrees. It is basically fall here, but it can still get up into the 90s during the day. Even though Pete looks like he's still standing really well, I can tell that he is a little bit nervous. It seems like the amount of breaks that Pete needs is pretty close to the amount of breaks that I need today, so that is working out perfect. Typically with Pete, I'll do his two front feet first and then wait a day and do his back feet, but I think I'm going to do all four of them today. I have gotten a tiny bit behind on the horse's feet, so I want to make sure I'm not dragging it out longer because there are a few horses that are due for a trim. I still need to touch up Ziggy's feet and decide if I'm going to put shoes back on him. I trimmed Scarlet yesterday and Nigel is due for a trim as well. It seems like my spine can only handle trimming one horse a day. I do slap on my back brace as a precaution, but it still is a little bit too much for me. Pete is being a very good boy even though he's a little bit nervous, so that definitely helps. Pete really is not that hard of a horse to trim if I give him the right amount of time to settle in and relax first. Here is what that other front foot looks like. It does still have a little bit of breaking on the right side, but I'm not really worried too much about that. His foot trimmed up really nicely and he should be good to go for another six to eight weeks. This time of year, their feet do start on, going a little bit slower. 
So fall and winter, I do get a tiny little break because the horses generally need to be trimmed less often. It looks like Pete's hind feet don't have a lot of length. They do seem to be growing a little bit forward, so I'm just gonna trim them back a little bit. Pete can get a little bit kicky with his back feet. For horses that have trouble holding up their back feet, I do really like to use a stand. It gives them a physical object that they can put their foot on. Pete does seem a little bit extra nervous about his hind feet and leaves me a giant turd pile. There's nothing worse than trying to trim feet that are covered in fresh turds, so I make sure to get that out of the way as soon as possible. I do really need to get Pete's feet trimmed up, so I'm not gonna let that deter me today. These hind feet, I'm not really taking too much growth off. I'm just rebalancing the foot and his heels have kind of run forward a little bit, so I am gonna be fixing that. The flies really seem to be bothering him today, so after reapplying some more bug spray, I am ready to get back in on it. It would be nice if he wasn't bothered by the bugs so much. A lot of horses will stand still even if they are bothered by them, but Pete is extra sensitive, so I do think I'm probably a little bit more understanding with him than the other horses. He was getting a little bit wiggly with his back foot, but he wasn't too serious about it, so I let him kind of move it around until he relaxed again, and then we were back to our trimming. This part of the trim is where Pete has the most trouble. He does not really like to bring his legs forward for me to kind of roll the edges. Because horses are prey animals, they have a pretty strong flight or fight response when they feel threatened. Taking away their feet and putting them on a stand can make them feel extra threatened just because they can't get away if they wanted to. That is one of the reasons why if one of my scared horses like this is having trouble holding their feet up, I am a little bit more lenient and let them put them down and have a little break. Here is what that hind foot looks like after I'm done trimming it. Just a really basic maintenance trim. Pete has really good conformation, so unless I do a poor job of trimming him, they stay pretty balanced. And it looks like after three of his four hooves are trimmed, he is finally just now starting to relax. It's really hard to tell from the video that he was a little bit on edge this whole entire time. Thankfully, now that we're moving on to his last hoof, he is much more relaxed. This last leg is the one he has the most trouble with. He does have quite a bit of scarring on it. When I'm teaching a horse how to pick up their feet, I like to use a soft cotton rope, but some people still use just a regular lariat kind of rope. If a horse gets in a pickle, it is almost impossible to teach them how to lift up their feet without injuring them in some way. Pete has a lot of old rope burns on this leg from his previous trainer, so it is really not a surprise that this foot is a little bit more difficult for him. I've had Pete for a really long time, but this is something that he has never quite been able to get past. I think this is just one of those times you have to acknowledge the past experience of the horse and really treat them accordingly. Pete's the kind of horse that could have behavior escalate very quickly. I know it doesn't look like it here, but Pete is actually quite nervous right now. I think it's pretty easy for people to misread a situation, especially with a horse like Pete. Even though he's calm and seemingly quiet, he is ready to react at a moment's notice while I'm doing his feet. 
for someone that doesn't handle these kinds of horses day in and day out, it can appear that it happens out of nowhere. For a lot of these really sensitive horses that I don't have plans on selling, that is a big reason why. Sure, they look pretty calm and docile when I handle them, but it would probably only take a day or two being handled by a overly aggressive trainer or someone that just does not have the knowledge to handle a horse like Pete. Goose and Gus are the exact same way. I have gotten a few comments lately about how I just don't hire some high school kids to come out and handle the horses every day. But for most of these horses that I never plan on selling, there is a huge reason why and it's just because they are very difficult for the average horse person to handle. Even a very well broke, good minded horse is going to regress down to the level of the handler over time. For a horse like Pete or Goose or Gus, it is unrealistic to think that I could just send them out into the world and find the perfect handler for them. A lot of the videos that you see with horses on YouTube that have really bad training problems, I think it boils down to the owner just not having the knowledge to properly deal with the horse. And a horse like Pete is the perfect example of that. I haven't really done anything with Pete in quite some time. He does require a lot of consistent work for me to actually ride him. I am pretty bummed about Skeletor's current situation and I do have a bunch of dressage saddles that I bought him so today I'm going to try one on Pete. Pete is a registered quarter horse and he was bred to run barrels. I have always thought that that environment is probably just going to be way too much for how he acts. He is a really pretty moving horse and after working with him for a number of years I do think that he would make a gorgeous hunter under saddle horse or maybe an eventer. Today I'm just going to introduce the dressage saddle to him and probably do a little bit of work in the round pen just to kind of see where he's at. He's a little bit out of shape and I definitely think he's going to need some legging up before I start riding him. Pete has been saddled thousands of times, so it's not a big deal for me to saddle him up with a new saddle. I don't do the dressage thing very often, so I only have one girth, so hopefully it fits Pete okay. The saddle actually seems to be a perfect fit for him. It's not too wide, it's not too skinny. I don't even think I have stirrup leathers and irons for this saddle. It's been sitting in my track room for a few months and this is the first time I've put it on a horse. I did find this saddle at a tack swap. It was $150, which is a pretty good deal because these are around $1,000 new. I did find some other really good deals at that sale, so I'll put the video of that trip in the description if you guys want to check it out. Pete is a little bit worried because Scarlet is galloping around in that smaller arena. She has okay. really gotten a bit of energy lately and I think she probably is ready for some actual work. Since Pete was kind of excited to get caught up today standing by the fence, I'm going to try and make today's session as stress free as possible for him. I don't really want to go in with anything new, I'm just gonna get him moving around the round pen and see where he's at. I am going to be free lunging him today. This is something that Pete really had a lot of trouble with when I first got him. He was one of those horses that would just gallop around frantically and never settle down. But it looks like he is able to calm down very quickly today. I really like all of my horses to be able to stretch down and relax when I have them in a round pen or on a lunge line. I don't really use it as a tool to get them tired. I want to make sure they're relaxed and using their bodies properly. It looks like Pete is cool as a cucumber today. He stretched out going one direction and after checking his saddle fit, I'm going to take him back the other direction. Typically Pete is a little bit more stiff this direction. It's really hard to tell but maybe you guys will notice. 
It takes him a few extra trips around the round pen before he finally starts to stretch down and relax. I was a little bit surprised that he quieted down so quickly because I really haven't done anything with him in quite a long time. Compared to how he was when I first got him, this is an excellent way to start our session. The saddle pad that I am using on Pete today is relatively thin. It has some wool along their back, but then the sides is just a very thin piece of cloth. This is the perfect kind of saddle pad to use if you're actually trying to see if the saddle fits properly or not. I do have two other dressage saddles that are traditional and leather. This one is synthetic, but it does seem to be working pretty well for Pete today. I really love this round pen. The size is perfect. I like the walls at the bottom, but the footing is horrible. It gets really hard and I can tell that Pete is struggling a little bit today. There are also a few places along the edge where there's a bunch of moisture collecting and it does end up being pretty slippery. I have finally invested in a new harrow, so hopefully when it comes in, I might be able to get this dug up a little bit more so it's nice and fluffy. I'm convinced whoever put the footing in at this place really did not know what they were doing because the arena is also not an appropriate material for actually riding horses. Unless the horse has really strong rock crunching feet, the arena can really make them go sore quickly. Fluffy. The round pen footing is a little bit nicer. It is sand, but it is super compact pretty much all of the time. I wanted you guys to see from my point of view how pretty Pete is when he's moving along. He does carry his body really well. We worked on this for quite a long time. This is something that I work with all of my horses on just because it's easier for them to carry a human around if they can properly move their own bodies. Pete is still wanting to relax and stretch down through his neck and his top line. I have found that these kind of scaredy horses do take a lot longer to mature mentally and I think after quite a number of years that Pete might finally be getting there. Pete is 10 years old this year which is unfortunately when a lot of the horses in Montana are retiring. Since he really wasn't ridden until he was around 4 years old and still pretty sparingly over the years, he should last a very long time. I only lunged Pete for around 10 minutes and that is really all it took for him to get in a pretty decent frame of mind. I don't really have enough time to ride him today so I'm just going to work him the other direction and wait for him to relax and then I'll put him away for the day. He does move pretty nice this direction but I hope you guys can see the difference when he goes back the other way, he is a lot more relaxed. Scarlet is definitely not helping because she keeps galloping around her little pen. While I don't have enough time to ride Pete today, I think I might actually introduce Scarlet to a saddle pad today. It seems like she definitely needs something extra to keep her mind occupied now that she's gotten a lot braver. Even though I'm not going to start riding Scarlet until she is around 3 or 4, it would be helpful if she does get a little bit less sensitive. She is probably going to be a horse that takes a little bit of extra time to come around to the idea of carrying a saddle around. So getting started with that now will give her enough time to come to terms with the fact that she needs to be doing some real work eventually. I would like to turn her out with the other horses, but she is continuing to push on and test the fence and I just don't trust her with my regular smooth wire fencing. 
She is pretty smart and she does realize that if she pushes hard enough on this gate that she can get it to unhook and try and escape. Even though she is scared of a lot of things still, that doesn't mean she's not wicked smart. I would love it if I could put that energy towards some productive learning. Before I put Pete back in his pasture for the day, I am going to do a few little exercises with him just to see what he remembers. I'm pretty happy that Pete was able to keep a relatively cool head for our entire session today. He does seem a lot more open to spending time with me lately, and I think that is the influence that Stewie, Whiplash, and Little Gus have had on him over the last couple of weeks. All those boys get really excited to come inside and be worked, so I think it is definitely changing Pete's perspective on me as a human. He is a little bit stiff through his neck and his back, so that's something that I'm going to work on with him. When I first started Pete under saddle, he did have a lot of trouble with accepting a human doing crazy things around him. He has gotten a lot better and I would have liked to do more with him today, but once I started jumping up and down, I realized that my back was really starting to bother me. This is probably the most frustrating part of my summer this year. Every time I have a spare minute to do some work with the horses, my body is definitely turning against me. In the grand scheme of things, I'm really not that old, but since I have been using my body pretty hard for physical labor most of my life, I am definitely seeing the consequences of that more recently. I do think I'm going to do a few things with Scarlet this morning. One of you guys sent me these gigantic fly traps. They are amazing. Generally, I don't have to put anything like this up, but this year they have been really bad, so thanks for those. With Pete all brushed up after a final treat, he is ready to go back out into his pasture. I got out just a little baby pad to work with Scarlet with today. It was really surprising. Pete decided to hang around for some extra scratches even after I had his halter completely off. Whiplash was interested and he came over to see what we were doing. Whiplash is definitely still in charge. He checks on all of the other horses in his herd, but everybody in this little group seems to be getting along a lot better without Goose. Before I leave for lunch, I am gonna catch up Scarlet and do some work with her in the round pen. She has been making a lot of progress lately just in her general handling, but she does get spooked pretty easily still. I'm not really sure what spooked her there. I think it was a little piece of rope that was hanging from one of these fence posts. She has been getting her halter off when she gets out in turnout, and she's been really easy to re-halter, which is super nice because it did take a very long time for her to accept this. I was going to roll this all into one long video, but I do think Scarlett deserves her own little video for this. Even though it's just a small saddle pad, this will be the first big item of tack that I'm introducing to her. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that so you don't miss any of her under saddle training. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.